Hey everybody, it's Edmund Vanderbilt with another episode of Once Around the Block. I'm here with the one, the only... Michelle Clark with Art Works for Freedom. Hi Michelle. Hey, it's awesome being here. Awesome. Thank you for being here. <laughs> yeah, on this, first, on this first beautiful fall day actually. What a great time to be outside. It's a weird, it's a weird, it's been a weird October, no? Yeah. Super humid a couple days ago. Yeah, and but now, you know, jacket, a little nip in the air. Yeah. Are you a person that likes the fall? Do I you love it. You do? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do too. I mean, I like uh, November. I like Thanksgiving. That's that's my highlight. Yeah. I, I really like Thanksgiving. So, getting cozy, got a scarf on, uh -huh. good jacket, all cozy, right? Yeah. What? Uh, where are we right now? So right now we're at Dupont Circle in the nation's capital. Excellent. In one of the coolest, most active neighborhoods here, and we are looking over there at an exhibit um, that is being put on by Artworks for Freedom. Artworks for Freedom. Artworks for Freedom. We're an NGO that. Uh, takes on the, the issue of human trafficking and we believe and, and our, our goal is to raise awareness and get people really engaged using all of the arts. Okay. So, because you know, it's a, it's a dark subject totally. and it's a tough subject. Human trafficking, right? Hum, human trafficking is a, is a dark subject. Pretty much people know about it, but a lot of people tend to keep it at, at arm's length. Yeah. So we use arts in all its forms, dance, perform, uh, performance, uh, multi multimedia, painting, spoken word, to get people engaged in a way that they might not. And what you see over here mm -hmm. is an exhibit okay, called Bought, Bought and Sold. They're photographs by uh, an award-winning photographer, Kay Chernu. She actually founded Artworks for Freedom. Okay. And uh, she interviewed survivors, listened to their stories, and created this amazing work of art that we now have here right at DuPont Circle. Totally. So human trafficking is a pretty intense subject. Yeah. Um, from what I, it's also closer to home than a lot of us think. Yeah. Is, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it is. DC, DC is a big, you know, unfortunately, is a big locus for it. You get all different kinds of trafficking. A lot of people tend to think of sex trafficking yeah. right away, and certainly you see that here. A lot of trafficking with underage girls, with right. minor girls. The prostitution of anybody who's a minor is considered a form of human trafficking, okay. according to our laws. But you get all sorts of other forms, too. For example, um, uh, trafficking for domestic service when people bring maids from a foreign country to work here yeah. keep them locked in their house don't give them any time off that's a form of human trafficking and that still exists uh, it still exists it's going on there there are cases on a regular basis that uh, people discover here in the Washington DC area you find um, sweatshop labor you find agri in the agricultural labor you find human trafficking in the hospitality industry, mm -hmm. uh, everywhere you go. Wow. Yeah. A lot of times also, I'll tell you an interesting form of human, a couple of interesting forms that yeah. people don't necessarily think about. You know sometimes you go around Washington and you see little kids uh, begging yeah. or selling bootleg DVDs or, or candy? A lot of times these are probably, they're parts of an organized begging ring. Wow. And they're managed by somebody who, if you look around, there's going to be an adult right. lurking around somewhere watching them. Yeah. And these are kids that are that are if they have to meet a quota they have to sell they have to have to sell a certain amount of candy yeah. and um, they're they're being exploited uh, there are stories now of trafficking happening in nail salons right. you know we all go and get our nails done right. well you've got to make sure you learn to recognize the signs because there have been some really good reportings on human trafficking in nail salons for example yeah that's super intense. The, the the kid thing is scary, right? I mean, the kid thing's really it's really scary. It's really tragic. Yeah. There are a lot of good people in this in this city who are yeah. doing awesome work. Okay. Uh, to put on a a, a month long campaign about to raise awareness about human trafficking, we have partners with a number of really good organizations and do a shout out to our friends at Fair Girls uh -huh. and Courtney's House and the Polaris Project, who um, work very hard to advocate for good policy to take care of survivors um, and are they DC based or national or? The, the ones I just uh, quoted cited to you are based here in Washington okay so dealing with a local problem uh, dealing with the local wow. problem pa Polaris addresses also policy issues on a you know on a larger yeah. on a larger level 
Yeah. And the, the mayor's office. I was going to say, the D.C. Gov. Uh, been awesome. The yeah. um, Attorney General, Mr. Carl Racine, is 100% behind it. Awesome. The um, D.C. Human Trafficking Task Force is chaired by people out of, uh, co-chaired by people out of his office. Mm -hmm. And um, So they, what, can, uh, what can people, how can people help? What can people do? That's a really good question, Edmund. Mm. Uh, and it's really, it's important to recognize that if you, that everybody actually can do something. It's not like we're all hopeless and uh, the, 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 the cop, the law enforcement are doing things right. and the NGOs are doing something. And of course they, we need them and they're on the front lines. It starts by recognizing, being learning what the signs are. Mm -hmm. Because as we talked about, you know, we can intersect with human trafficking and not even know it. So recognizing who might be a victim of trafficking. If you yeah. go into a nail salon, how do you know that you're Let's in... Let's do another quarter. How okay. do you know that you're in... in um, We're cheating yeah, a little I'd bit, love, but... love to. I almost want to do another round, <laughs> yeah. but what yeah. I, I want to get to another thing right after you finish yeah. your thought. So, so, you know, learn, learn the signs, know who to call, know who to contact. And who is that? Is it government? Well, is there it? is a nat the National Human Trafficking Hotline uh -huh. is on all of our information materials. And um, if you think you should do something, I have it actually in my cell phone. So if you, um, I don't know if you want to pause it or well, just... Well, this is a one-shot like, deal, so I don't... Is, this is a one... Um, like it's a continuous shot. I'll just kind of pan around. Yeah, just pan around. A little action DC here. <laughs> National. I, so people can call okay, a number. Okay, National Human Trafficking Hotline. The number is 1 888 373 so, awesome. so if you have it in your phone, yeah. you, you see something weird, you see kids that are with adults that don't look like they should be with, you see look, people look like they may be in trouble, call that number. Awesome, awesome. So um, we're coming up on the end, which we yeah. kind of surpassed, but this will be it. Um, I have the wow moment, yeah. or the words of wisdom. The words um, of wisdom, we already said it, yeah. everybody has a role to play. Everybody yes. can do something. Excellent. Learn, learn about it, recognize the sign, and um, take a stand. Nice. Can you say bye to the folks at home? Bye folks at home. Bye everybody, thanks for watching, see you next time.